Swifties, welcome back to the channel. Okay, so if you're wondering why I'm all red everything today, it's because it is finally time to rank Taylor Swift's red album. Guys, so ignore everything I've said in every past video, a video about it being so hard to rank the songs because I thought it was going to be a, it was a challenge already ranking Reputation, Lover, 1989, and now um, I didn't know a challenge until I started ranking Red. Guys, this this album was so ridiculous, ridiculously hard to rank. Like, I'm only like 50% sure that I ranked everything the way I really wanted to. But I feel that depending on my mood and depending on how I feel, um, these can change. And it's, it's crazy to say that because it's, you know, Red. We've had Red for quite some time now. And to say that about this one single album, I think it's just like, whoosh. So... People always say Red deserved a Grammy, and I've always said it too, like Red deserved a Grammy, Red deserved a Grammy. After re-listening to this album again, just like really, really listening to it to do this ranking video, I just can't even fathom how Red does not have a Grammy, like what the heck? And it's funny because usually when I rank my videos, I listen to the album, I rank the songs, I put my little notes on my computer, etc. And then I do the video. This time, I listened to the album, I ranked the songs, and then I re-listened to it again, and then re-heard a bunch of other songs multiple times just to, like, really soak it in because I just didn't want to stop listening to the album. And, you know, sometimes when Taylor comes out with new albums, we kind of forget about the past once we start listening to everything now, so... You know, I've been listening to Reputation and Lover, like, non-stop. And, you know, I'll go back and listen to a few songs on Red. But then when you go back and you listen to the whole album from the start, it's just like, oh, God. So, anyways, today I'm going to go ahead and rank the Red album. Uh, so, basically, I'm going to be ranking songs 1 through 19, which includes the bonus track. So, it includes all of them except the original demo recording. So, I'm not doing the original demo recording of Treacherous, Red, or State of Grace. Um, so, again, we're going to be doing tracks 1 through 19. So here we go guys, wish me luck because I'm about to rank um, one of Taylor's greatest albums ever, Red. Let's go ahead and just kick it off, Girl at Home. So Girl at Home is a very nice song, it's cute, it's adorable, I love the message that it sends out, but I just love so many songs on this album a whole lot more. Number 18 is going to go to Starlight. So first of all, great title for a song. It sounds so dreamy. And what I love about this song is that Taylor made a long-lasting love sound so beautiful. Like, it's so dreamy, the song, that I, you can't help but to just, like, you know, fall into it and start singing along to it and imagining yourself and imagining. Because when I picture this song, I imagine, like, a couple. I imagine her talking about this couple. And I just imagine seeing this couple go throughout their life, you know, have their 10 kids and teach them how to dream, you know, that sort of thing. So great song. Um, that's why I'm going to go ahead and put it there. Number 17 is Everything Has Changed featuring Ed Sheeran. So I've said this like a zillion times, but Ed Sheeran and Taylor Swift could legit do a full album of love songs, heartbreak songs, you name it, and I swear it would be magic. They are magic together. Their voices flow so cohesively well together. Um, I just really like the combination of Ed and Taylor. And e I remember being a little bummed when I found out she wasn't going to have a song with Ed on her Lover album because because I kind of like having a song with Ed on every album and everything has changed is part of the reason why I love having them together. Number 16 is We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together. Okay, so I remember when I first heard this song, I was so shocked because I really had no idea that Taylor could really go all out and make a song like this. You know, it was such a shift from some of her stuff that we were used to hearing, so different from what's on her Fearless album and, you know, stuff like that. So when I first heard this song, I was like, what? Taylor did this song? And But it left me wanting more because it was so easy to sing along to, like, you just get into it and I just feel like this was a song that anybody could love whether you're like whatever fan of music you are I feel like you could easily get into the song number 15 is 22 okay so it's songs like 22 and 15 that make me want Taylor Swift 
up to do a song about turning 30. I actually thought she might. I know that it was kind of out there, but I kind of hoped that she would for the Lover album, just because you know she's turning 30 this year. And you know, I'm a couple years away from turning 30, so I need something to look forward to. Um, so yeah, but it's literally songs like this that just make me want Taylor to do something like for each like different phase of our lives because 15, 22, 30s, 40s, etc. are so different. So I kind of want a song like that just because I know it can, she can do a 22. So 22 was also great on the Red album because the Red album includes so many soft songs and so many sad songs and it was a nice break to have a song like 22. Also while ranking this album I realized that I'm really really into sad sad songs. Number 14 is going to be The Last Time featuring uh, Gary Lightbody of Snow Patrol. Okay, so that this is like the first time I had ever heard of Gary when he did this song with Taylor Swift. I had never known his music before and I just gotta say that I think that out of all the people Taylor Swift has collaborated with, uh, maybe even including Ed Sheeran, I feel that her voice and his voice just mesh so well together. Maybe even a little bit more than Ed Sheeran for that like country-esque vibe. Um, so, okay, what I liked specifically about The Last Time is that usually Taylor Swift does, you know, her, her sad songs are her perspective, her heartbreak, her version of what happened, right? But with this song, we sort of got the two perspectives. We got the guy and Taylor, so like a guy and a girl voices together. And I like that because I feel like it made it more endearing because they were both sort of hurting for each other, not just one person hurting for another person. Like, no, it was both of them hurting each other, both of them wanting that person to put them at the name at the top of their list uh, put their name at the top of the list so I think that this song uh, it's just so nice you know and I feel that I feel that Taylor wrote a really nice song for couples that maybe are in a hard place but still have something that can sort of bring them back together number 13 is gonna go to stay 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 okay so stay 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 is so adorable so freaking cute um I don't know anybody who can hate this song. How can you hate this song? It's so lovable. So the thing about this song that I think is also great is that this shows that Taylor not, we all know Taylor can do very serious, very raw, very emotional songs, but she can also do those really cutesy, adorable songs. And you know, that stay 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 and i think that this one is very speak now vibes so it was nice to have that um with the red album number 12 is gonna go to red okay so i know right red at number 12 Oof, that should tell you how good this album was guys that the song the album was named after is at number 12 okay don't hate me um okay so first of all what i love about red is that taylor wanted to really get the point of cross of loving someone so passionately so hard loving him was red you know she really wanted to get that emotion out there really describe what it meant to love someone you know and describe it as the color red and I feel that she described it so perfectly and I feel like a lot of people sometimes you know they think that getting over breakups is easy but it's really not in some cases and I think that it's really not especially when you love him you know, loving him was red. It's hard to get over someone like that. So I just feel like Taylor really nailed the emotion she wanted to get across with this song. Number 11 is gonna go to Holy Ground. So this song reminds me a lot of State of Grace, which is probably why I love them both so much. It's weird though. So when I was like listening to the song right now, I was like, why do I love Holy Ground so much? I don't really know, guys. This is one of the songs where I don't have like a clear, concise reason as to why I love Holy Ground so much. I just know I never skip it and I know that I couldn't rank it like low on this album um I just really like this song you know I like the vibe I like I just I just really like the vibe of this song it just makes me want to get up and like stand up and like really just like root for something you know so there you go holy ground number 10 is gonna go to sad beautiful tragic okay so this song here um oof okay 
So one of the things I want to say about this song is when I was listening to it, it kind of reminded me, like the intro, the beginning portion, kind of reminded me of The Archer. I don't know why. I haven't listened to both songs like side by side, but when I was listening to it, I could hear myself singing, come back, I'm ready for come back. Okay, whatever. That's just kind of how I felt in the beginning of Sad, Beautiful, Tragic, um, like re-listening to it. What I like about this song is the lyrics. The lyrics are everything in this song, okay? Everything. So when I was like younger, I used to write a lot. And then I kind of stopped. But when Red came out and I listened to Sad, Beautiful, Tragic, this song made me want to go back and like really put my feelings on a paper just so that I can express myself and that sort of like level that Taylor Swift does. Obviously not at the same level. But it just made me want to like write and tell my story because I feel like with Sad, Beautiful, Tragic, she was just like opening up. She essentially wrote like a love, like not a love letter, uh, like a letter to heartbreak. I think that's what Sad, Beautiful, Tragic was to me. And so so I just thought that you know with her opening up opening up with a song like this and letting her fans in was really really nice and that's why I really like sad beautiful tragic number nine is I knew you were trouble okay so first off the thing that I mostly remember with this song is during the red tour every single person in that building was chanting singing the song so loud at the top of their lungs because I feel that we can all relate okay if you've ever dated anyone you are like mainly for like girls okay I'll just say this, this is for girls because this is from a girl's perspective if you ever dated we all have dated a guy that is just trouble 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 okay no good not good for you and you know really hurt you broke your heart but then you kind of should have known that he was trouble um so I feel like every girl in that building was like really relating to this song and when we were all singing at the top of our lungs I feel like we all had a vision or a memory of someone that we knew was trouble um the line where she says now I'm lying on the cold hard ground guys guys that lyric that single line you can't beat that okay you can't beat that and lying on a cold hard ground think about it like really really think about it and it just like really sucks you in um this song falls in line with blank space with style uh in terms of like i don't know in terms of how it sounds and i think that this was one of the songs that really introduced us to taylor Swift's pop version that we really knew that she can go out there and really cross over and do a different genre number eight is i almost do okay so with most taylor Swift songs i can say oh i relate to the song oh i relate to the song right with i almost do this one hurts to listen to because you know she talks about how you know he's like trying to reach out to her and she's ignoring him and that she probably and that he probably thinks that she's over him but she's not like if he only knew that she almost did um you know that she almost like reached out to him that sort of thing and I listen to it and I'm just like man I would never be able to do that like I feel like I'm a sucker like if the person I love breaks my heart and like reaches out to me I'm gonna be like okay like hey what's up you know and so I just like every time I listen to the song I'm just like oh my god like you have to be like such a strong person to say like no putting an end to this stop and I feel that that's the message I get with this song with I almost do and every time I listen to it like I can totally get where she's coming from but I also know that it just she, it takes another level of strength I think so that's why I really like I almost do wait one more thing I want to add is the lyric where she says in my dreams you're touching my face oh that I love that part okay I just need to throw that in there <laughs> number seven is begin again so begin again oh I love this song so what I love about this one in particular is the imagery for this song I really truly feel like we were all there like we were all there that Wednesday in the cafe when she had the date and all of that I saw it the way she described it it's it's literally like we were just sitting there watching her do this date and just oh she just explained it so well. I think the imagery in this song is everything, and that's why I love Begin Again. Number six is The Moment I Knew. Okay, guys, so every time I listen to The Moment I Knew, like no matter how many times I've heard this song, I just keep thinking to myself, holy dang, I cannot believe that this happened to Taylor. Um, 
I mean, obviously, it's just an assumption, right, that this happened to Taylor. Um, dude, like, imagine that. Can you, like, seriously imagine that? Just the person you love so, so freaking much not showing up to your birthday party and having to, like, have everybody there ask you about him and, you know, feeling so awful you have to cry in front of everybody and then everybody knows that this happened to you. Like, when I hear this song, it breaks my heart listening to this song. Like, as a fan, it, like, hurts listening to the song thinking that this happened, you know? And every time it, I wonder to myself, like, did this happen like oh my god you know it's just like a very very strong moment and the fact that she like was able to like really like put it down to paper and talk about this moment I just think is like incredible so this song always gets me every single time it's a beautiful song it pulls your emotions again I very I like sad songs so there you go the moment I knew we are now in my top five favorite songs from the Red Album. Okay, number five is gonna go to State of Grace. Okay, so State of Grace is the song that kicks off the Red Album, and I love the, the fact that it kicks it off. So what I like about the song is that I feel it really captures the independence of somebody, like an independent person that ends up falling in love, and this love is so real, and uh, I just feel like she really captured like the fact that maybe somebody wasn't expecting this love to come to them, you know, but then it did, and it was like worth fighting for it. Um, I love the beat to this song. I think it's like a really fast beat, but the lyrics are like, you know, like softer. Like the lyrics aren't, the, the words that she's singing aren't moving as fast as the beat. So I kind of like how that sort of played into it. Into it. Um, I just think that the song is really nice and I love the beginning of it and I just really enjoy listening to the song. So I feel like that's why I had to rank it so much higher than some of these other songs and even though it reminded me of Holy Ground I just think that State of Grace is just like so so good. Number four is gonna go over to The Lucky One. Okay so when I first heard this song I cried. I cried so much listening to the song. I don't even know why but it just like really really got me. I love the perspective that Taylor took with this song where it's almost like she's singing about somebody else but then she turns it around and it's about her and you know being famous and then when she talks about the young things lining up to take her place. Oh just so much of this song. It's Taylor really opening up and talking about fame and that's one of the things that you know when she came out with the lover uh the deluxe album and she included her diary entries those were some of my favorite entries where she talks about what it's like to be famous because you guys got to like Taylor Swift is so freaking famous like I can't even imagine always having these cameras and all these people always watching and being interested in every single thing that you do and I just like I love 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 hearing Taylor's perspective on that of how she feels and um I just really really like this song so I just I got to praise the lucky one because it's so wonderful and it's such a deep song but it's also like really nice the way that she sings it and again I really just do like the different perspective and the way that she told this story. Number three is come back be here okay i didn't realize how much i love this song until it's just that song that i always feel like listening to when i listen to the red album so come back be here i love that you can feel her frustrations you can feel her longing like when you listen to this song you can feel that she really really wants to be with that person or wanted to be with that person and even then, like, it makes me feel like running to the person that I love because you just want to be with them all the time. I know, right? Super clingy. Well, me, okay? But whatever. Like, it's just like, you can really feel that. And I just love the way it sounds. Like, everything about this song. Like, it's simple, but it has a huge impact. So, I think that this is a very underrated song um, in this fandom and deserves more love, okay? Come back, be here deserves more love. You heard it here first. <laughs> well, I don't know if you've heard it elsewhere. Okay, there you go. Come back, be here. Number two is going to go over to Treacherous. Treacherous. Oh my god, guys. Oh, prior to doing this video, I just had Treacherous on repeat, repeat, repeat. I've loved this song since the start, guys. Since the start. You know, I always talk about Taylor's song sending you to another dimension, dimension, whatever. Um, Treacherous does that for me. Treacherous, oh, it just really, really, I don't know how to explain it. 
uh, have you just like ever been you know with the person you love like standing like sitting right next to them you know just like really feeling them feeling their hands feeling their skin feeling their breath feeling their kisses whatever feeling that embrace I feel that Taylor captured that close intimate moment between two people so well with treacherous and god the lyrics are so good so so good all of it i can't even tell you like a specific one like this this daydream is dangerous uh you know uh, oh my gosh i can't even think anymore but like literally every single line to this song is gold gold like i tweeted this out before doing this video i was just like you know what, Treacherous is one of Taylor Swift's greatest songs of all times. Greatest songs of all time, period. Not just in the Taylor Swift verse, okay? Um, I just feel like maybe Treacherous deserves more love. Like, way more love. Like, this song should be, like, up there for, like, everybody. You know, it should be getting the same love as, like, so many other songs. I just can't get over this song. And I'll, I don't think I'll ever get over this song. And what I also like about this song is how it how it builds, how I can visualize it. Um, it's so pure and so touching. Like, you can really feel this vulnerability coming from Taylor. And I think that we've all been there. We've all been really vulnerable in love. And, oh, God, I can't say any... I just really like this song, like a lot, like a lot of treacherous number one. Actually, it's number two. Okay, but that should tell you a lot about number one. So here we go, number one. Number one is All Too Well. So guys, All Too Well is my second favorite Taylor Swift song ever. Um, and number one for the Red Album. Guys, All Too Well. I was recently hearing a lot of people say that the song was overrated. You guys are so wrong. I'm sorry, but I can't agree with that. I just can't. I can't. All Too Well is everything. It's everything. This song is more than a breakup song. It's more than a heartbreak song. No, this is the ending to a tragic love story. The ending to a tragic love story, okay? I don't know how many of you guys have ever been, like, dumped or completely, completely heartbroken, devastated, crushed, uh, all of those horrible feelings, like, where you just feel like your heart has been ripped out. That's all too well and, like, a million times more. Um, this song, this song really, really gets me and, like, Every single time I hear it, I can't help but to, like, really get into it and just, like, I can scream this song at the top of my lungs, like, just sing it so passionately. Um, I love how she talks about her innocence, her pure, the pure love that she gave, you know, in this affair that she was having and, you know, still coming out destroyed out of it. Um, let's see, what else did I want to add about this? I think I've already said everything I wanted to say about this song. I just think All Too Well is... There's a reason why this song is so beloved in this fandom. And I'm so glad it is because it deserves so much love. And I get so... I was so happy when Taylor Swift sang it at the Reputation Stadium tour. I was like, yes! LA got All Too Well! Yes! Um, so there you go, guys. Um, this is my ranking for the Red Album. It was so hard. You know, usually I welcome you guys to rank your songs and leave them in the comment section. But I just feel like a super evil person to ask you guys to rank the Red Album because it is so hard. I was physically like, I, I had a really hard time with some of these songs. Like, so many of these songs like up here that could have easily been down here. But you know we just had to make some decisions here so anyways guys um let me know what you thought about this ranking video send me your thoughts on the red album in its entirety if you guys want to rank the songs you are more than welcome to also i have i'm working my way down from lover to taylor swift so if you guys want to see my past videos i'm going to link them in the description box so that you guys can see them after this i will be ranking my favorite taylor swift album of all time speak now so if i have this hard of a time with red i don't know how speak now is gonna go guys because speak now is my favorite album although i have been debating okay i've been debating between speak now and reputation so oh so many decisions all right um guys give this video a like as always please subscribe to the channel I do all types of videos as you guys can see sometimes my channel makes no sense but what can I say I post what I love I love lots of things so give this video a like subscribe to the channel um, hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at underscore Denise Salcedo I hope to hear from you guys and have an awesome day and thank you guys so much for watching my video as always bye